Back to order. There were no decisions made in the executive session. And good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Heidi. Hello. Karen, I'm we don't have the live feed yet. Oh. Our production crew is kind of slow <laughs> this morning. <laughs> so I'll take this opportunity to get some coffee. Strange times, isn't it? Because the very first thing I want to do is stand up and shake your hand. Yeah. <laughs> Just, yeah, that's a hard. Uh, I don't. Yeah. It's hard not to do that. I tell you. It is. Because you almost feel like you're disrespectful because it's something you've done I your know, whole life. It's, my dad made me shake hands from. Oh yeah. The time when I was a little bitty, and it's hard not to do it. I've and closed it's, every it's deal I've ever made. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to come up with something new. You know, the Asians might have it, mm -hmm. a bow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I never thought these fist bumps would, would really yeah. do that thing. <laughs> okay, you ready, Scott? Yeah, I'm okay. sure we'll call a meeting back to order. No, no decisions made in the executive session. And we have visitors from the Cheyenne County Hospital this morning. Heidi, we know. Can you yes. make your introductions? And yep. I'm Heidi. This is Rance Ramsey. Um, he's our new CEO. Is your first name again? I'm sorry. Rance. Rance, okay. Yes, sir. Rance Ramsey. Pleased to meet you. Nice to meet you. Welcome to St. Francis. Well, thank you. Cheyenne County. He did his first month now, right? Yep. Yep. Just uh, complete my first month. So. Where, where did you come here from? And sank right away. Good. <laughs> Where'd you come from? Uh, West Texas. Midland, Odessa oh, yeah. area yeah. in West Texas. Well, this would be quite a change for you. Yeah. Uh, but uh, all of my family, uh, they come from, they're farmers and ranchers. And uh, so we actually moved up here off of the, my parents and grandparents' homestead. Uh, and so it's, the land is actually pretty similar, uh, except that we're in the middle of the oil field. Right. Uh, but it is cotton and ranching and oil field is... And they're from. taking a tremendous hit in the oil yeah. field now. I'm like, you know what? I got out of there. About the right. Time uh, yeah. Because, uh, yeah, uh, we had been leading the nation for about 10 years in a row with with the lowest unemployment rate at right at 2%. And then uh, now we're leading the nation with the highest unemployment rate at, like, I think I heard last week, is at 47%. I saw some numbers. So 47%. Yes, sir. Oh, that's awful. That's that's going to hurt for a long time. That is going to be painful. Yeah. Well, as you know, it's our economy and everything else is based on agriculture, yep. and so we and you will be exposed to just about everything agricultural that you can imagine. Yeah. But uh, we're glad you're here. Well, thank you. Good to be here. Yeah, we. Uh, We'll try to offer as much support to the hospital as we possibly can. We've worked really well together for many, many years and good, good. plan on continuing to do so. Yes, exactly. I like to hear that. So. Yeah, good. yeah. Well, fantastic. Uh, things are going, uh, like I said, I've only, only been there for about a month, but uh, things are going, going well. Uh, well as can be expected in Sure. Times. I was really, really pleased with walking into the place when, when, uh, when they set me up with interviews. They, they offered to let's just we can just do it over uh, remotely over video, and I was like, I, I can't do that. I, I need to I put need eyes to on Be it. there. I need to walk down your halls. I need to meet your people and get a. I gotta have a feel for for that. I, I don't do well over the oh, video conferencing thing, and uh, and because where I come from, it's it's very family oriented. I'm I'm from rural. Uh, my uh, the county I come from was about population county wide of about six thousand, and uh, the county seat uh, was about three thousand within the city limits, and so it's rural. And that's where that's sounds home. very similar. Yeah, very yeah. similar. Uh, 
and I lived nine miles uh, northeast of, of town uh, on our family ranch, and hopefully I'm going to be, be about ten miles north of town here uh, soon. So, uh, well, good. Uh, we we've made an offer on a house out there, and so hopefully we'll end up out there soon. Good. Uh, good. But it's very similar, and uh, when I when I got here, uh, walked the hallways and drove through the community, uh, it was it was it felt like home to me, and that was what I was looking for, and and that's what I told Les Lacey. He said, "What will it take for for you to feel like?" This is right for you. I said, I, I gotta feel like I'm home. And I said, I'm a I am all about relationship and communication and I said I I love being around people and and so if I feel that then I'll Go make ahead. that connection immediately. And it's been obvious being here that it's uh, it's a great place and Well if and when we can ever get back to whatever normal is going to be, uh, I'm sure the community will be more than happy to welcome you. Yep. And, uh, I'm looking forward to that. I'm ready to get out of this mess. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> and, and a question we hear occasionally is, is questions about the hospital. How prepared? Are they ready? Have they been busy? And, and I'd say, well, you need to go talk to them. Yep. Uh, well, I'll tell you, we... I was really surprised at, at how, or pleasantly surprised at how well prepared uh, they were when I when I got here. They had, uh, I think, they had good uh, procedures in place. Uh, everything seemed really solid, and we were we were meeting on a, a daily basis and uh, good meetings, good conversation, and we were reevaluating. Uh, our processes that we did have in place uh, every every day and and for a little bit nearly every day making changes to those processes finding our weak spots uh, the holes that we had in on where we dropped the ball and where we needed to change something and we were making those changes and uh, and still are we had a meeting this morning the same thing and I'm sure y'all had the same to with us we yeah. we're we're rolling with the punches the best yeah. way we can and uh, Supplies, uh, we are we are solid. We we had a little bit of a moment there where things sort of dipped down a little bit, but we're back uh, in good shape with all of our PPE, uh, gloves, okay. face masks, everything. Uh, we're looking pretty good. Our burn rate on those is very minimal. Uh, we still only have the two positives. Um, and we continue to test, uh, but it's. But you've never had a positive in your facility, is that correct? No, you know. no. And uh, so things are looking good. We're beginning to try to open things back up, and we have we started doing a few surgical procedures that were necessary here. A couple, I guess this is second week now, right, man? And uh, so. Uh, the revenue has taken a hit, of course, uh, but we're looking to start pulling that back up. As soon as the restriction starts getting lifted, I can see. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Bird City, we're uh, we're going to open that clinic Monday for from one to three, uh, and do a short little opening there, and then. And then reevaluate the process once we do that, see how it works, see what the flow is, see if there's anything we haven't thought about, what we need to think about, and then probably the following week we'll probably schedule it open for for two days. And we we want to get that back going for sure. Um, our patient volume, uh, our clinic volume is about 68% of what it has been, so it's it's not not it's not too bad. Uh, our outpatient volume is a little bit less. Mm -hmm. um, I think our revenue stream is it's about, about 50 30 percent. Yeah, or, it's about 30 percent from February. If you compare it from February before any of this happened, it's hard to compare from a year ago because we didn't have Dr. Lick, so yeah. that's not a true comparison. So I don't know if I'm getting off subject, but what 
What's the reasoning that not many people come to the doctor and stuff because of this COVID? I mean, it, I mean, they gotta still be getting sick. They're just not coming. Yeah. Uh, we don't Cause, know. you know, because I, I drive the ambulance in Bird City, and they haven't had a call for who knows how long. It's it. We're not sure. Uh, it's sort of strange. Uh, you would think that people would still be getting out when they are sick and coming, but uh, they're not. Well, I think fear. Yeah. yeah. Basic fear is just yeah. it's what keeping them away. I know with the PT department, that's what she's seeing. Is there's you know she has the percent of patients that are just being non-compliant, and and, the, no. and then the percent of patients are just like, no, we're not coming until this COVID thing's over. Yeah. You know, well, and they still need therapy, but they've chosen to wait. <coughs> yeah, with I, PT, I think we're running about 67% of our volume in physical therapy, and uh, about 22% of that uh, is being us restricting them uh, because of uh, either uh, their diagnosis or their underlying health uh, concerns, and we don't want to put them at risk. And so about 22% of them are being uh, uh, held off because of COVID, but then there's about 12% left that they just, they're just not coming. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. But uh, I think we're, we're doing okay uh, financially. We, uh, we got, we got the COVID, you know, the grants and, and, the, and, and all the funds. Uh, and we have been very cautious with that. We took those away in, the, in separate accounts and are not touching any of that uh, that is going to be paid back. We know we're, we're staying on top of that stuff that's going to have to be paid back and that we don't want to touch. <laughs> Matter of fact, I sort of wish they would take would back now. some of that <laughs> yeah. uh, because they sent a lot. And really? Yeah. But it's, it's use or lose. We're still unsure on some of it. The, the One of the stimulus is, you know, they, they're very broad in the the usage of it and the amount of money they gave us, I don't see how they're going to not ask for that back. So, I mean, there's just different categories. Some of it's very general and says to prepare for COVID patients. Well, you know, are they going to say we can buy equipment? Is it only salaries? And they're literally changing the rules every day. So we're working with, you know, auditors and BKD and Great Plains has been a huge help um, in getting that situated and what we need to have and be ready to pay back. <laughs> well, to say the whole thing is confusing would be a yeah. <laughs> understatement <laughs> so. at the very least. Yeah. So, well, sounds like you're doing great. I, I hope you continue to to thrive here and enjoy it. And well, I, I am so far, so I'm, I'm looking forward to getting past COVID and seeing what normal really is here. <laughs> yeah, so are we. And, <laughs> and get out there and enjoy things. So, so have you moved your family yet? Yeah. Um, my wife, I've, uh, my wife is with me. We're in a motor home right now, uh, but we've been married. We'll be 32 years in July, and uh, got three kids. Uh, my oldest lives in Chicago. Uh, he's 28, 28, and then my daughter lives in San Antonio. She's in medical school. Uh, she's married. Uh, her husband runs a. Uh, physician-owned clinic in San Antonio and then my youngest uh, he's 23 he was in Austin but uh, they shut down his business that he was working for so now he's in Omaha uh, doing some work there so and well it sounds awesome. like you'll fit in nicely the only thing I'll caution you about is winters are going to be drastically different than what you're used to <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's already bit me a couple of times yeah, it's it, not winter. <laughs> yeah you've only got nipped you haven't gotten bit yet <laughs> but uh, yeah it, it's it's very similar I've... Yeah. yeah we driving up here was like almost from Amarillo to here it's like it's, it's a looks the same, change. doesn't it? Yeah, it's, it looks the same. <laughs> it's pretty similar the whole, yeah. the whole way. Yeah. Well, again, thank you for coming in. And thanks for okay. filling us in, giving us some update. And yes, sir. I hope when we get back on track, whenever that's going to be, we'll, we'll plan on seeing you maybe once a month or so to okay. keep sounds, us posted on what's going on. Sounds great. Sure will. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Great to meet you. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
look that old. I thought maybe you had kids in grade school. Morning, <laughs> DJ. Sorry about the. No, it's fine. Good morning. I got. Yeah, uh, three chemical bids. I need to purchase chemicals to get me started through most of the year. I just marked the one, two, three. There are no no specific order. I just like to keep business local. So, so uh, like, oh, never mind. I thought this was somebody else. These bids for the exact same. Exact same products? Yes. Well, brand name varies, but they are the exact same chemical products. Okay. And amounts the same? Yes. Because there's quite a variance in your bids. Yes. Probably due to the size of the people? Yes. Are you wanting to keep names out of this and just use the one, two, three? Oh, uh, yeah, I'd like to use the one, two, three. Um, I don't have them in any order, as I said, but you know, the lowest bid, I always try, try to think of cost, and the more expensive the chemical is, the more it costs our landowners and the county per acre. And we've gone from $13 an acre, 13 to $15 an acre, so when the chemical increase, you're looking at 18 to $20 an acre for average chemical right now. So. It's kind of imperative to keep the bid as low as we can to yes, save costs all the way around. Yes, because we also have to offer the 25% cost share, or they're only paying 75%. Well, bid number two comes in at $4,007.12, which is by far the lowest. That's $3,400 cheaper than the highest bid. I guess that's the reason I asked if the products were all the same. Yes, they are. Um, with that bid number two, since they are a very, very large global company, I do get a government bid assist, and that is why the cost is exceptionally low. The others cannot offer me that. And if you had a recommendation, what would that be? My recommendation is bid two. But as I've said, I, I keep continuing with about the same general company, and I would not mind if we moved and tried business with somebody else in the area as well. It's just because it's the lowest doesn't mean it's always the best. Well, DJ, I have a question. I noticed that the gallons are different. I mean, I understand. So they use, I'm sorry, Leslie, they use panoramic instead of this black tail. They're not all in order. Okay. But it, for the same chemical, the eight gallons, the eight gallons I need, they come in a four by one gallon case. Mm -hmm. So there's four gallons in a case. And that price jumps all over the place. Well, I, I think it, it would probably be nice to let other people do it, but I mean, at this different prices, <laughs> it's kind of hard to... And, and getting chemical people in our, in our area, and even the smaller guys, to put in chemical bids is tough because not nobody's really making profit or anything right now at this time. Well, businesses, small business is being hurt. Now you're, you're talking about things like... Uh, Transportation costs, which are all they're going up, except for the price of fuel, but uh, availability, yeah. Roger, do you have anything? No. I, 
I just think we need to take two. Okay. I, uh, I agree with that. Okay, I need a motion to go ahead and accept bid number two for. I so move. I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So bid number two for chemical purchase. That amount. That amount was four thousand seven dollars and twelve cents. Compared to the top bid, which was seven thousand four hundred and sixty seven and twenty seven cents. So that's quite a quite a savings. It is getting tougher. Prices will be climbing throughout oh, the year. Just like everything else. Well, it's it's a a government big. discount that makes the difference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But this will take care of me probably through August. Okay. And uh, I'm assuming you're working steady right now. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, haven't you done already over 700 acres? Uh, uh, actually, I've covered now to date with Nathan out right now. We've covered 1,200 acres, and out of that, we probably sprayed 500. Good. So, that's, we're not even half to the list. So, all right, DJ, anything else? No. Thank you. All right, thank you. agreements do you have on there? New employee? Oh, yeah. Your wage agreements? Yeah, I'm wage agreement. oh, okay. I've got several things. Don't think you're getting out of here if I have take this. Everybody, well, like always, unsure. <laughs> oh. And you, how are you doing? Well, not too bad. Good. I wanted to uh, go into an executive session for personnel. Okay, uh, not elected personnel. Mm -hmm. How long? Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Okay. Motion for ten minutes of. Executive session for non elected personnel. All right. Thank you. Second. All in favor? Aye. We're just trying to help you out, Will. <laughs> I need all the help I can get. Me too. <laughs> 